Uh, welcome to Kessel House Berlin, where I have Chris Corner with me. Uh, Chris, uh, you're uh, right now on tour, Alive in New Lights, and it started uh, just earlier this month. So how has the tour begun for you? It's wonderful. Um, I'm very privileged and lucky to be able to get on stage, be ridiculous, and be loved for it. So it's always a pleasure to go on tour. You know, there's a transition into the chaos of touring that is sometimes difficult because I'm quite a reclusive person in my life, in my private life. Um, <clears throat> so when you go from studio stability to the chaos of touring, it can be like rebirth, some kind of uh, birth. Um, but now I'm in it, I feel good, I feel fit and ready for it all. Okay, and uh, IMX concerts are always very visual, always very energetic. But uh, in your own mind, uh, what constitutes a great IMX show? I think um, a good combination of understanding from the crowd, of, of energy from them, energy from us, Basically, if you're trying too hard, then I think it's not quite right. So, <clears throat> if the lights are powerful, if the sound is good, if if my voice is working, um, usually everything's in place for for a really good show because the the often the the people really give us a lot of energy. Um, I think that's best way to describe it. I don't know if, um, you know, sometimes, but then again, you know, you can play a fucked up punk club and uh, it can be mind blowing. So there is no total recipe. Um, I'm just being a bit perfectionist about it because there are lots of technical things that, that I worry about that sometimes don't always come up to standard, but that's live music. You have to get used to it, you know. Okay, and uh, how does it feel to be back in Berlin? I know it's, of course, not the first time after you left, but uh, does the city still hold a special meaning for you? Yeah, I mean, this this project was basically um, created here. Um, I mean, I started I started IMX in, in London, but I really didn't feel that that was the place to, to experiment. Um, I came to Berlin, I spent a lot of time listening to underground music, going to the strange clubs and um, <clears throat> immersing myself in, 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 the, in the subculture and energy of, of Berlin, which, which was pretty sexy and dark and cool. And I think it still is. Um, it still has, has a lot to offer as a city. I mean, I moved on because, because of my own sort of private issues. I still think it's an amazing place. Okay, and uh, I believe you are still based in LA, mm -hmm. so um, it seems like you're uh, sort of a uh, slow world tour mm -hmm. with where IMX is based, so it was uh, London, Berlin, LA, so uh, what will be next, and uh, how does these uh, different cities uh, affect you? I live in a bit of a bubble wherever I am. Um, uh, I'm, I'm quite a reclusive person, so the the city itself it doesn't necessarily culturally change what I do that much. Um, <clears throat> being in Los Angeles, you know, the geography, the climate, it's very beautiful and, and it's quite stabilizing. And, and um, I needed that after many dark, cold winters in Berlin. Um, so, and it's also very close to to a new passion of mine, which is the, the desert. I'm 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 almost obsessed with 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 the desert. Um, maybe it's my childish escapism that that, that just wants to be alone a lot. Um, <clears throat> it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Okay, and uh, of course, Alive in uh, New Light is also the name of your new album that was uh, released uh, last month. Mm -hmm. So what could you tell me about this album? 
It's a symbol of my newfound positivity, I think, maybe, of, of arriving at a place of self-surrender, acceptance, being more compassionate with, with myself. And, um, uh, you know, it came out of a quite a long, dark period of, of, of being clinically depressed and, and being an insomniac and having lots of struggling um, issues, psychological issues that, that I, um, you know, I, I spent time working on and healing and, um, and I, now I feel like I've arrived at a place where I can talk about it a bit, a bit clearer and um, a bit more hopeful. Yeah, so so it's 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 a very it symbolizes a very nice sort of transition in in, in my life. Okay, and uh, through your uh, career with the uh, IMX, uh, what have been like uh, the constant uh, sources for inspiration for you for your music and your lyrics? Is it your own like experiences always, or mm. has there been something else too? Most albums are pretty self-analytical um, I mean it is me observing the world it, it's observing myself but it, it's it, they're quite intimate private statements um, uh, there's a bit of bite politically there's there's a, a lot of human behavior in there there's a lot of relationship interaction but in the end I spend a lot of time in self-analysis. That's pretty much what those records are. I think that's why it can be quite an, <clears throat> an emotional journey every time it happens. <clears throat> um, so, uh, you know, there are specific songs with stories and, and, and all of that stuff, but, but in the end it's just me looking at me and um, offering um, people an insight into a, a singular vision. Um, it's always been a very hardcore sort of pure single vision. You know, it fails sometimes, it succeeds sometimes, but at least it's pure. Okay, and uh, you are also a visual artist. How did you begin to experiment in this form of art? And as a visual artist, uh, do you uh, are you telling a different story with your visual art or making a different statement than with your music? Came, always came naturally for me that, that when I would make music, I would see images as well. Um, so when I write songs, uh, I can't really stop seeing things at the same time. Um, it, so at some point, I, I really want, needed to learn technically how to, how to express that. So uh, <clears throat> live visuals I started with... Um, putting them to, to IMX shows and, and understanding how to edit and, and, and how to create dynamic between music and, and visual. Um, and then I got into making the, the, the videos for, for the, for the uh, singles. And, um, and now I just, I love that, that art form. <clears throat> I love cameras. I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to technology. So that really occupies a part of my brain which is non-emotional that that I like very much because it gives a good balance to this this very dramatic overly emotional uh, music that I make um, so so the visual thing is definitely something that I I, I want to spend more more time with um, it's it's inspiring working on other people's uh, music too um, I actually find it more comfortable working visually on other people's music than on other people's music. So it's a way in to collaborate and, and to to also connect with other like-minded individuals. Okay, and uh, for a few years now there has been rumors of uh, sneaker pimps uh, getting back together and making the fourth album. Uh, what are your thoughts on the comeback and do you have any news on that? I I'm asked about this a lot. Um, it, it it comes and goes. You know the way the, the waves of enthusiasm come and go. I'm I'm very enthusiastic about releasing that record. There's there's enough material. It's it's very good. Um, but there's this political 
system or managerial problem that 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 happens every time we try and make it work. Uh, Liam, the other main uh, guy in, in in the project, is he has a very very different life to me. He's very settled. He's very he's a family man, and I have this chaotic lifestyle. And bringing it together is quite awkward. Um, <clears throat> We're both very busy doing things, so there, I think there needs to be this outside influence that, that drives it because both of us don't really have the time. Um, so it might just sit there until we die, and then somebody's going to release it. I don't. At some point, I really don't know. But but there's no problem between us. It's it's really the the management side of things. Okay, and uh, lastly, a uh, very easy question. You, of course, your musical career is uh, far from over, but uh, for you, you know, till this day, uh, what kind of moments are the most memorable for you? Hmm. Memorable, in a positive or negative sense, both, uh, any sense? either <laughs> sense. Um, well. <clears throat> There's two extremes, you know, if you if you work like I do, you work very privately in the studio, it's a very intimate, uh, controlled environment, you can have quite overwhelming emotional feelings whilst making music, I mean, that's the power of music, um, but there's nothing really like expressing it in a performance, there's nothing really like seeing another human and seeing that they understand what you're saying and transferring that energy. So those, those, uh, I think in the end, uh, I still live for that human connection when I get on stage. And um, I, I think I need it in my life. You know, it's, it's, it's quite a turbulent lifestyle, but I think it's worth it. And it still gives me so much um, joy to, to, to see that. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. It was an honor and regular leg tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.